Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to talk about making that great MP3 podcast using Audacity, a free software package found on the web. Now, if you don't know how to install Audacity or make it MP3 ready, exportable, just go to part one of this series, and we'll show you how to do that. Now, the most important thing about audio recording is not the audio software, but actually the hardware. When it comes to audio recording, it all starts with a microphone. And so you need to have that great headset. Now this one's not too expensive. It's Plantonics headset. can be found on Newegg, www.newegg.com, a place where we go to find a lot of our computer hardware at a great price. This is a USB headset, which means it plugs right into your USB port, and it's noiseless. So as opposed to those analog headsets, which gives you that shh sound, this will actually give you a clear sound, straight line on that audio recording, and we'll show you what that means. The important thing about this microphone as well is it's got this high resistive headset, which means someone can be talking in the background a number of feet away, and you won't hear them. So you can use this one in the office. Don't need a special padded recording studio. Another one, which is my favorite, is the Rode Podcaster. I've actually seen this one used on TV. It goes for $229, and you can buy it at Sweetwater, www.sweetwater.com. And it is great. Probably the best sound you can get right now. And you just plug it right into your USB port and start recording. No need for any type of external recording box. I just love this new technology. And let's go right to Audacity. Let's make our first recording. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and X this one out. So the little X button here so you can delete any recordings that you had on the stage and start new. And we'll just go File new. So I'm actually ready to start a new recording. Now it works just like your VCR. You got to the front, you have a play button, you have a record button, a pause button, a stop button, and to the end. So let's just hit record. Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University. And you can see as I record, my wave is being recorded as well. This is extremely helpful, a visual cue, and we'll use this for editing our audio. So when you're done, just hit the stop button. Or if you wanted to take a break, you could hit the pause button and start recording again. Important that you hit the stop button, though, and that way you can start editing. Let's edit this wave a little bit. Say I didn't like a portion of it. I could just highlight that portion right there. And if you're not highlighting, here's your highlight tool here. And if it doesn't seem to be highlighting, always make sure that you hit that stop button. If so often I'm recording, I'll make a mistake or I'll cough or someone will do something in the background. I don't like it, so I can just highlight the part I don't like. And I can either edit and go cut, or I could also just hit the scissors. Boom, and it's gone. Just the opposite, I can take a piece maybe I want to repeat, and I can edit, and I could copy. Now notice I also have the Control C I can use, or Control X to cut, and Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. So you have those keyboard uh, shortcuts as well. I'm going to copy here, and let's Control. V. So it's a great way, just cut and paste, just like you do <laughs> with a Word document, you can do with audio as well. We're going to control undo that a few times. Here's an undo button right here. So you can just click on that and undo what you've just done. Or if you go the opposite way and redo, there's a redo button right there. Important thing now, as far as recording is concerned, is down at the bottom, there's this project rate. I'm going to click on that. And you can see there's a number of hertz or kilohertz that you can record in. We found that for the web that 44K does great. And you want to make sure that you're outputting mono as opposed to stereo. Now, why am I saying that? Because in a stereo wave, you've got twice the content. So if you have a one meg audio file and you do it in stereo, you've got two. We're always counting bits. We're trying to keep things as low as, as we can. The lower the bit number, the smoother your application is going to run. Now, sometimes we do have to go down, and you guys see as you go down to 22K, 16 to 22K, 16K, 11K, you're going to get less and less of a good sound. You're going to sound like you're in a tin can. It's taking out those higher frequencies. That's a big problem. We seldom like to go down in that area, but we will, depending on how large our audio is and how many technical difficulties we're experiencing. But I'm suggesting 44K, stay with that, and you'll be pretty happy. Anything above that, you're just kind of wasting as far as a multimedia application is concerned. So I want a nice wave introduction, nice musical introduction. A lot of people do that. And I've 
gone to a place that I often get nice audio loops or sound effects from, and that's FlashKit. www.flashkit.com. A number of free sound effects and audio loops you can grab. I just clicked on audio loops, and when I did, I came down here to jazz, selected that. I used to be a jazz musician in one of my former lives, and I found a nice little jazz loop right here. That'll be a nice introduction to my podcast. I'm going to go ahead and click download. And when that comes up, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to scroll down to my download. And under MP3, I'm going to right-click on that and go to Save as Target and click Save as Target and save it into my documents. And I've already done that, so let's go ahead and go right to that and import that sound into Audacity. So now I want to import that audio jazz loop into Audacity. So let's go to Project, Import Audio. Uh, let's click on that jazz loop and import it. And I actually want that jazz loop to occur before my audio introduction. And so I'm going to hit the selection tool here and select my audio introduction. And here's a little move forward tool. Let's move that forward so the audio intro, musical intro, occurs before my my talk. So let's play that and see what it sounds like. Go to the beginning here and hit play. Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern. And that sounds great, but I kind of want to fade in and fade out. So let's hit stop here and so we can edit the audio. Come down here and with the selection tool select it. We're going to select that audio musical introduction here. And I'm going to go to Effects and do a Fade In. And also to Effects and do a Fade Out. Here we go. And already I see that it's too small. So let's go ahead and um, Amplify. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But it looks like here on the end here I've got a little extra piece. So I'm just going to clip that off. So let's magnify this wave and slide over and there's that extra piece that I accidentally got in there so we're gonna highlight that and go to edit and cut or you could have used the scissors tool as well looks pretty good but the problem is once again let's demagnify that so we can see both waves the problem is once again is I've got stereo channels and as I said earlier I only want mono I'm gonna highlight this section right here let's grab this section right here and highlight it I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in the top. Cool. And now I can just go ahead and X out this wave right here. Let's take a look at both waves. Don't need that anymore. And I'm going to highlight this wave right here. And we're going to slide it over to the beginning. There we go. Go back to select and let's listen to that. Now I did give up a little bit, but when you're talking about size and multimedia, you sometimes there's a trade-off, and I've actually decided to go with this, and it sounds good. Only two things I want to change here, uh, too much of an introduction here, fade in, fade in. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And there's a little bit of a space here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out as well. And you can use the commands or just the scissors. Cool. And now let's listen to that. And that sounds great. So now that I've created my audio podcast with my musical introduction, I want to go ahead and save that Audacity pro project. So let's save that project. And we'll go ahead and put that in the uh, same place as I had the Audacity files in my documents. And we'll just call it my podcast. And you want to save that file because in case you want to come back and edit again, you've got the project files here to work with. And now I want to export it as MP3. So go to File, Export as MP3. And I'll put it right there uh, in the uh, My Documents folder again. Let's put it in the same place as I've got my Audacity project file. Cool. And hit Save. And here comes up the ID3 tag 
for MP3s, and you want to choose ID3 version 2. That actually is the most popular. This allows you to do your iTunes tags, for example, a title, an artist, and we'll just call it My Podcast. Artist, that's me. And you can put an album, a track number, a year, let's say 2008. Uh, choose your genre, and I guess it was uh, jazz, for example. And you can put some comments in there as well and hit OK. And you've just exported your first MP3. Let's check and make sure that's in My Documents. Let's go to Audacity. There we go. And there it is, My Podcast MP3, and you're ready to upload that to the web.